put your taste buds to the test, the Denver Museum of Nature and Science is looking for volunteers. And Dr. Nicole Garneau, the health sciences curator at Denver Museum of Nature and Science, is here to explain. Hi, Nicole. Hey, how are you? Good. So tell us what you've got going on here. This is really interesting. It's really fun. So the museum has become kind of this, this hub and expertise in how humans taste things. And we really want to understand why people taste things differently. So do we? So we what I do. taste, dirty might not taste? Absolutely. So mm. let me, let me so explain. So different taste buds. Well, not necessarily different taste buds, but be different genetics. Okay. So we like oh. to think that our DNA is like a cookbook for your body. And what does a cookbook have in it? Recipes. Recipes. Got it. Ooh. I'm putting you guys to the test here mm -hmm. today. So recipes are like genes. So at the museum, we study which genes are responsible for different tastes oh. and how that relates to food choice. So there's a big overall message, but the real thing is that it's so fun for families to come in and do it. So do you generally, this might be getting a little too deep, but do you generally like crave and taste what your body needs? When you're being mindful, yes. Uh -huh. And this study really requires mindfulness. Okay, so, so put this? us to the there test we go. here. What okay. did you bring? So, so this we, study is called trying? Genes and Grains. Okay. And what we want to understand is why some people think whole wheat tastes really bitter uh -huh. and therefore don't like it, and some people like it because it, like it, it tastes sweet. Man, just keep coming out of the woodwork. Yeah, huh? we do. We all, all right. want to try it. So what we're going to do first. Our food um, truck canceled today, so yeah, this so is this all this we is got to do. All right. <laughs> all right. <laughs> we do have seconds okay. if you guys like them. All right, so what I'm going to have you guys do, these are in a specific order. So we're going to do it kind of quick. Okay. Because I want you to try to figure out a consensus of, so you get one each. I'm going to have to break one of them. So these are all different. You've got these little crackers two that look the same. This is like communion. Yeah, break them in half. <laughs> there yeah. you go. So oh there are two pairs that are same. So okay. two of these are the same and the other two are the same. You right. have to figure Everybody out which are the same. And which, whichever two you think are the same, you need to move into the pairing, okay? okay. So these are two different varieties of, of, of grains. Okay, so really that first just one to me, can I say, tasted like absolutely nothing. Yes. Okay, so pay attention to that and see okay. if there's one that has a different okay. flavor to you. Okay. So this is a partnership with the USDA mm -hmm. and some yep. wonderful wheat researchers at CSU that we're working with with the museum. It's all funded by the National Institutes of Health, a science education award. And the idea, again, is to have how can we understand food choice based on taste. Hmm. And then we also do this in a community model. Okay. So everybody who works in our lab is a volunteer. Now what if it all tastes Thank the same? You. So that might dictate that there's something else going on with your own genetics if you mm, can't tell right. the difference. Is that faulty? For me, I'm saying just these two. Just different. <laughs> really? Just Ernie? different. I think the last two mm. okay. tasted the same to me. The first two were very bland. Okay, you guys want to make a, a stab like? before we reveal? All right, let me taste the I last think one. I need to learn to be more mindful. I think they I all taste the same to me, too. Well, okay. Then you're just yeah, as twisted as me. All I'm right, so it, it is the two middle ones were the same and the two end ones are the same. So what does that say about your genetics? Yeah. So then we bring it to the next step. So then what we would do is we would do this huge Q-tip and basically do a cheek swab. Anybody want to do that on camera? Sure. Go for it, Ernie. Por que no? <laughs> uh -huh. So we would do the cheek swab. We get your uh -huh. cheek cells. We extract out the DNA. Whoops, oh, can't oh. do that on camera. Let's oh. just throw that away. Oh, hold on. <laughs> <laughs> um, we so go. we would then look at your specific DNA and understand what's going on there and how it associates ah. with it. Now, here's the fun part. Here's our hypothesis. So here is stevia. So oh, here's the, the deal. This is our control. So okay. stevia tastes mm. very bitter to some people. I can't do. I totally taste bitter. Okay. Too. I know immediately. It's so I've you had don't something. have to try this because I won't, you know. I know. And you'll make a you know mm -hmm. nasty face on okay, camera, and that won't be good. We like it when yes. you do that. Yes. Oh, you should try this. Yeah, so sure. take a sip. I know Does immediately. Does it taste sweet to you? Yes. Okay. So let's look at our little. Let's look at our little cheat sheet here. So again, DNA affects our taste. Mm -hmm. Taste affects flavor. Flavor affects food choice. Sweet to you, bitter to Natalie. Let's well, I like flip sticker over. Bars. So check. This, <laughs> there you go. So check this out. If it tastes mostly sweet, mm -hmm. in this particular gene or recipe that we think is responsible, you're going to have a C there, which is a different type of DNA molecule. Mm -hmm. Mostly bitter for you. Yeah. You're going to have a G. So you okay. can, if it's both, then you start playing with these a little bit. But so this is what these individual differences. You know, there's not one magic silver bullet for yeah. food choice. These things are playing a role every day in the food that you eat. So that's what, we're, that's what we're studying. And I think the real fun thing is that um, the real fun thing is for families and to see how people are different. Sure. And to see if everyone your in your family is the same. Your kids do not have the same sensory world as you mm -hmm. do. The real fun thing is I try to eat this Please earlier. don't break your teeth. <laughs> 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 we also have fake food. So oh, when you oh, no. Oh, I know. So the idea is how can we help people be more mindful and understanding themselves? and also your kids, and then have your food choice to be part of that. In the meantime, it's real science. Mm -hmm. It's really community. All, all, everyone who works in our lab is a community volunteer scientist. Guests from the museum can participate. Right. 
and you get this fun take home. Well, well thank you so, so much. much. Yes. Yeah, the, the experience way. is available daily until August 2nd. Go so do that right. with your family. And you need, if, you're, if you have age 17, you need the legal guardian present because it is real research. Okay. Yep, free with museum admission. We hope to see you guys oh, there. Gosh, Bring your yeah, families. Yeah. Thank you guys. Well, happening today, an important deadline for RTD, which could have to shut down.